one of the things is when you hire out of desperation and you have these people that are just not a good fit in your business, when they don't end up doing it the way you want them to do it, you end up just taking it from them and doing it yourself. And then thinking to yourself, like, I'm just going to get rid of everyone. Cause if I'm doing it myself, what am I paying for? And then you get to a point where you're burnt out and overwhelmed. You're like, I want to hire, I need to hire somebody. And then this vicious cycle keeps happening. Today on the Unburden Your Business podcast, we're going to be talking about the mistakes that I made when I first started my business. We're going to make this quick and simple and really get down to the top things that I think if you could fix right now, whether you are just starting out, have this idea of starting your own business, or you've been in it for a while and you want to go back and kind of see what things did I maybe not do that I should be doing now that are really going to help me? And maybe some of you are going through these right now and you really can relate and I can give you some ideas to what you can start working on. So, so excited to get into today's topic. The first thing I think that was my biggest struggle was trying to find the right people to hire in my business to help me grow this dream and this vision into reality. And when you first start out, you feel this desperation to just hire people and just get started. And so one of the biggest mistakes that I made was hiring out of desperation basically trying to hire anyone, feeling like you can see the potential in every single person that you're interviewing and just saying, I can you know, develop them and establish them into what I see their potential could be. And really a lot of it is more of us just like hoping and dreaming that everybody's going to align with what we're doing. They're going to think it's amazing because we do. We then also try to do other things out of desperation, like selling our product to anybody and not really honing in on who is our ideal client and what are the benefits of working with us? How is this going to change somebody's life? How is this going to help them solve a problem that they have? And you end up by doing things out of desperation and without intention and thinking of strategy and executing on things that are actually going to produce you revenue and grow your business. You end up getting results that are based off of a default of whatever it is that you're doing without some of those things and thinking about. So desperation and having that desperation is a huge piece into some of the things that I did, I invested in that were mistakes because I was coming from the wrong place. So if you are feeling that desperation, try to see how you can go back to being really intentional, going back to your why of what's important to you, which leads me into my next mistake that I made. I started my business and I didn't decide what I wanted my business to do for me. What did I want out of my life? What did I want that to look like? How did I want my business to be a tool that I used to be able to live a lifestyle and do the things that brought me joy? And how did I want my business to show up for me? And now how do I show up to create that? I didn't have a vision. I didn't have a purpose. I didn't have a why. And really, I would say innately and intuitively, I had something inside my gut that was burning and I had this idea, but it wasn't fully thought out. It wasn't something that I can tap into regularly and make sure everything I'm doing is aligned. It's just something that I just started to get the ball rolling. And when you just kind of push the ball and get it rolling and you don't have a direction, it's just going to go wherever. And that is something that I said before is really, really important. And the next thing that I think was a big mistake was having this mentality and mindset that thinking how my business looked mattered, how physically it was seen to the outside world and what other people's opinions of me as a business owner, as a leader, as a woman, as somebody with authority really, really mattered in the grand scheme of things and how I felt worthy based off of that. And the only thing that matters is how you feel about yourself, how you keep showing up and how you keep pushing through some of the things that are really hard. Most people don't necessarily care as much what your business looks like as they care about the results you're able to give them, about the relationship you're able to build with them, about the way you're helping them solve problems that they have. So a lot of times you go into a business thinking you need to have the prettiest office, you need to drive the fancy car, you need to wear the certain outfits, you need to always be done up, you need to talk and 
uh, present yourself a certain way. And again, if you're doing these things without intention, if you don't know who your ideal client is and who you're talking to and who you're trying to attract and who you're marketing to, and you're just thinking that you just have to do something just to like show this authority, then again, you're not working with intention and you're not really honing in on what's going to work. And you're doing all this work and putting all this energy into just making things look a certain way or feel a certain way. And that only works when you are in line with your vision and purpose and you know exactly who you're supposed to be marketing to, you know your products, all of those things. Only then will you want to worry about what the people you're trying to work with think of you, how they perceive you, how you're building that brand and how you're getting that brand message out through your marketing. But in the beginning, nobody cares about the fancy car. Nobody cares about the fancy office. You think that it's bringing you a certain amount of authority and you're spending so much money going into debt, like investing all of these things without even validating your concept yet, making sure that this is even something people want to work with or a product they want to buy or a service they want to have or with you, right? And so sometimes I think we have our imposter syndrome and we think that if we just make everything look pretty and grand and spend all this money, that that's going to get people to want to work with us. And it truly is not the case. I went to a lot of debt. I did a lot of mistakes in this. And even today, like we show up not dressed in a financial service type of style when it comes to clothing. We don't have the most extravagant, beautiful office in the world and we are killing it. And we realize those things are not what matter. And so don't spend your time and energy in worrying about those things until you are aligned or until it makes sense and it's part of your business plan and it is going to help give you some return on whatever it is that you're investing. Okay. The next thing that I did that was a huge mistake was buying into the hype. What I mean by that is buying into the hype of the industry, buying into all the things that everybody else was doing that I was trying to copy because I didn't know what I was doing, or at least I felt that way. I wasn't trusting myself and I was just copying people. I was buying into the hype of what I saw other people were doing and what I saw the industry was kind of trending on. And I was buying internet leads, spending a lot of money because people were saying it was so great and this was the way to make a lot of money. And I was trying to follow these foolproof strategies that I didn't even come up with and trying to take this strategy and plug it in. It's like a box strategy. And I was trying to plug it into a circle and it just wasn't working. And I was getting shiny object syndrome, everything. I was trying all the things all the time until I was trying, instead of trying to see if this one thing was going to work for my business, implement it, see the results before I moved on to something else. So we had all these things happening all the time that were brand new and none of them were really done and thought out thoroughly and implemented well, because I was just all over the place kind of ties back to some of that desperation. And the thing is, is that you have to do the work and you have to show up and you have to have a plan and you have to make sure that it is aligned with intention on exactly what it is that you want your business to do. So try to not necessarily be skeptical about all the things and tools out there that you can use as a business consultant. Obviously, I want people to have the right mentality to reach out for help and mentorship and to still get assistance with strategies. But the way I do this is I find out what's important to you. And we build this based on your needs and not just taking all the hype and trying to plug and play this into your business. So don't be skeptical about the hype, but don't just buy into the hype so quickly and think that it's going to be the secret sauce that's going to help you 10x your business. Everything takes work. Everything takes you showing up and getting things done and tracking it and seeing the results and tweaking it. This is what entrepreneurship is about. And the faster you understand that, the faster you embrace that and get good at it, the more successful you're going to be. The next mistake that I feel like I needed to learn or I could have hopefully avoided was I wasn't leading my team. I wasn't stepping into a leadership role. I had basically created a job for myself. I was a glorified employee within my own business. And to be frank, sometimes that needs to happen in the beginning until you learn how to do all the things so that you understand 
what type of team you need to build, what type of people need to be part of your team, how to train them, what standard you want them to be able to execute and show up in the capacity of what it is that you're trying to do. And the sooner you can learn that you are the example, you are the leader, and everyone's looking to you as guidance and to lead them into what it is that needs to happen, the more successful you're going to be. Micromanaging your team and not investing in them is a huge way to keep yourself from being a leader. My goal today is to get people in the building who align with my vision, who understand how this organization and this business and the success of it and the position they play within it is going to bring them all the joys and things they want and strive for in their life and ensure that they're taking ownership of the results that I want them to bring. And with that, I don't have to do as much managing of them, if at all, because I'm making sure I'm leading them and I'm investing in them. I'm investing in helping them learn their zone of genius, stay in their zone of genius, master their zone of genius even more, and not always looking at what their weaknesses are, making sure that the people that I have within my organization are bringing to the table the best they possibly can and going all in on that piece. And then also, I think with the leadership part, one of the mistakes that I thought needed to happen because I was you know, maybe raised by society or the pressure of things. And just like what I thought was that you have to lead through fear and you don't. I started to do that and it was very detrimental. And when I learned that I could be a leader who was investing and empowering and could build relationships with the people in my organization and really spend more time getting to know them and what matters to them and how we can both have a win-win relationship within this than just leading by fear and my ego and trying to just get out of them what I want to get out of them, everything changed. So I think that's really, really important for you to think about as a leader. And maybe as you're starting out, yes, you may have to sit next to your team and do the same things that they're doing, but eventually, even then though, you're leading, they're still looking to you as the example. You make the decisions, you own the business, but don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and don't be afraid to have a relationship with them that maybe in society or in history just kind of shows that you're going to skew the line of boundaries. But I promise you, I've done this for 10 years. You can get very close to the people that are on your team and still have the right boundaries to ensure that they understand that there is a position there of who's the business owner and who's part of the team. The next mistake that I think I make and I say I make because there's, I still have to check myself on a daily basis sometimes, but I'm better at it now than I was when I first started, was doing things to feed my ego, doing things out of a place of my ego and instead of a place of intention and intuition and what really matters to me, which I know I've brought up quite a bit, but I want you to hear me. When I go to make a business decision today, when I want something, when I want a goal, when I want to reach for something, when I'm fearing something or I'm uncomfortable about something, I always take a moment and ask myself, is this my ego talking or is this my intuition talking? And the difference is, is your ego is going to care more about outside and external pressures and values and different things like that. And your intuition is really going to be more of what do you want? What makes you happy? Why is this important to you specifically? How does this align with your personal beliefs and values? And what it does is it allows you to make decisions that are really going to truly bring you more happiness, more contentment, more confidence, all of the things that we really want and not allow all that outside noise to influence the decisions that we're making. I thought I needed a big team because I saw other people doing it. And the bigger the team we had, you know, the more successful we were going to be. That was a huge money waster and a huge waste of time and tons and tons of stress. And also, you know, I was setting people up in my business to fail and they were getting fired, they were quitting, and it was just overall the worst situation possible. It is okay to grow your team slowly. The more you spend time 
interacting and investing and empowering and maximizing one person, that one person could be like three to four people in your organization. Otherwise, if you weren't spending that time. So you save a ton on payroll, you have truly dedicated people within your organization. And it's just a much, much better way to run your business. And also you run it lean. The other thing that I was trying to do or that I was doing to feed my ego was kind of waiting for someone to pat me on the back and just say, Hey, you're doing a good job. Feeling like that was important, that I needed that outside validation to just feed my ego. And you don't need to hear it from anybody. You need to say it to yourself. The voice inside your head needs to be strong enough to tap into that intuition and know that you are doing the best you can and you're showing up right now in this moment and that you can develop yourself. And you need to have that confidence that comes from within and that worthiness because no matter how much you do maybe end up hearing it from the outside world. You won't be able to receive it and really believe it if you don't believe it within yourself. And so getting rid of the whole, I'm waiting to be at the top of reports and wanting to be like the best out of my industry didn't even end up making me money. Like, what did that make me? What did that give me besides just feeding my ego in a very short amount of time. And I was already moving on to the next thing. Don't buy into that. You are building a business for the long run and you don't want to compare yourself to others. Just compare yourself to your own results and where you're growing in the moment. Another way that I was kind of feeding my ego was not having a good relationship or a good routine with my money was a huge mistake. I spent so much money that it makes me sick to my stomach sometimes to think about all that abundance just wasted in those moments when I could have showed up in a better way. However, I will say today, because of those things, I have an amazing relationship with money and I have a regular routine that has kept me in such a good standing and understanding that as a business owner, you've got to have a good relationship with money, how you manage it, especially because you have a lot more control and you want and you make a lot more money, but you want to make sure that you are doing what's right with it. What happened was I was spending all sorts of money on stupid shit that didn't matter. I was taking loans out for things just because I could, and I had no plans on what to do with the money, no plans on how to pay that money back, no purpose for it. Like all those different things that I was doing and making mistakes for and buying all the shiny, pretty things, thinking that that was going to make a difference. It wasn't. It would make a much bigger difference if that money was still in the bank that I could now use as I've learned to be better in investing, better at learning return on investment when I put money into something, better in being able to bring impact to my community and my family and all of those things. Not being as stressed out on how you're going to end the month, how you're going to pay the bills, right? So having a better relationship and always understanding where your money's coming from. We are not a charity. We are not trying to make all this money and just throw it out the window. You are here building a business because you want money and you want freedom and money is what's going to help you get that. You can love what you do, but this isn't a hobby. You started a business and you have to spend time learning how to manage your money, how to invest, knowing where your money situation is and your status at any given moment, become almost obsessed with it. Not in a way to get yourself into a scarcity mindset, but to bring yourself into abundance and respecting and honoring this tool that you have, which is money, to be able to do other things in your life and in your business. Another thing that I made a huge mistake on was I was trying to find rock stars to hire into my business and thinking that if I could just find that one rock star, they're going to fix my business or they're going to come in and help me do all the things. And having the rock star will fix my business mentality is a huge mistake. I've learned that you don't just find rock stars, you create rock stars. Because thinking that if you can just find that rock star, they're going to save you and you're just going to pay them whatever they ask for just because you want them within your organization is going to set you up to be very resentful when those people do not bring the results that you thought they were going to, or you realize that 
it's not the right fit. They're going to come with an ego. They're going to come with things that are just, I've done this many times in the beginning. And I kept trying this. I'm like, what, what am I missing here? This isn't working. You're supposed to be a rock star. That's supposed to be perfect. Again, that kind of potential. And I wasn't hiring them to be aligned with our values. I wasn't hiring them based on their character and based on the things that I knew it was going to take, not necessarily the skills, but that talent and that drive and the willingness to be coachable. Because like I said, I could create a rock star and get them for a lot less money if we're just going to be frank, but also someone who's willing to take a lot less money and do the hard work. I could then pay them a lot more and completely change their life because they did the work and they showed up. And I don't want you to think that you can just find that special person who's going to come in and completely change your life. You as the leader going back, you're going to need to create these people. And if you hire people based on what I was talking about, your core values and your purpose, and they buy into it and they show up to work and they have these characteristics and these traits that you know, you can teach them skills within your business and you can develop them. You can't teach somebody how to be a good person. You can't teach somebody how to have good work ethic but you can teach somebody how to use a system and software, how to explain and describe benefits and features within your business and the products and services that you provide, right? So things that you hire for that you can't really teach somebody and make sure those are the right things and then work on a training system and onboarding system and you as a leader showing up to teach them the things that they need to know to be successful in your business. That is the equation to build rock stars. Another mistake I made is not getting a mentor or a coach or a consultant sooner. I thought I knew it all. I was using my ego and feeding it and thinking, I don't need help. I don't need anybody. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to make the mistakes and I'm going to learn. And throughout the years, every single time that I've quantum leaped into a new level, a new phase, a new chapter has been because I have invested in learning and developing myself. And that could be anything from like I mentioned, getting a mentor, a coach, a consultant, going to conferences, dedicating myself to read a certain amount of books, following and consuming the right types of content that help develop me and make me better, working with a therapist if you need to, to get through some trauma that you seem to keep holding on to that are, keeps coming up in your business and your life, doing things that are going to help develop you as a leader and a business owner and as a person is always going to benefit everybody else as a whole because it trickles down out of you as the leader and helps your team be inspired. You're setting the example for growth and they're going to want to do the same thing. You're more knowledgeable so you can show up and provide that knowledge to your organization and it just continues to snowball. So I think that don't wait till you get to a certain point really take a look at how you can access help and get some things that are going to help you develop. And always, as you continue, I have not stopped investing in myself and investing in other people that are great at their expertise that can pour into me and teach me just because I've been doing business for 10 years and I have five different businesses in different industries. Like, no, now it's time to pay the big dogs because I'm ready for that. So just start small and remember, you have to constantly grow and develop yourself and invest. It's an investment. It is not an expense to help you get better and grow and develop. So don't wait too long. Don't feel like you can't find somebody that would align with you. There are so many options. Not everybody's going to vibe with me. I'm not going to vibe with everyone, but there are so many options out there. Do your homework, obviously, and make sure they are the right person for you and they can help you with what it is that you need. But don't even think that it has to be somebody specific to your industry. I learned so much from other businesses and other industries and people that are in completely different spaces. And I love that because it makes me think outside the box. And again, I don't want to buy into a lot of hype maybe in my industry and just think, oh, this one person is helping so many people in my industry. That's who I need to go to. No, it's okay to think outside the box. It's okay to go to them and to get somebody that's outside of your industry. And, you know, it can be as simple as just reading a book. So that's a huge thing that it took me a long time to start doing that. The other thing that I think is really important to talk about is running your business and showing up to your business based on your mood. 
mood-based actions. The problem with that is that decisions are based on how you feel in the moment or based off emotions. And though our emotions are very strong, it can be a very powerful thing in the way we do things. And I think they're super important. When there are things like your mood, which is going to change and shift on an hour by hour basis sometimes, you don't have the ability to stay consistent and show up consistently in your business to build momentum and get the right results. And if you have a team that's showing up and they're doing things based on their mood without consistency, without processes, without being able to really build that momentum, your business isn't going to be consistent and it's going to be very uncomfortable because you never know what you're going to get when you walk in the door kind of thing. And consistency is going to trump every single possible you know, weakness that you have or your team has or your business has, because when you can stay consistent, everything else changes. So mood-based actions are a big no. The other one is selling based on price. Always thinking about the consumer just wanting to save money on whatever it is that you have to offer and not really working on selling based on value, selling based on problem solving, selling based on education and relationships, those things are so much of a better way to show up energetically, emotionally, mentally, um, not just that, but like how the other person perceives you, the longevity and the overall client value that you're going to have with someone when you're able to show up and sell based on value and sell based on problem solving than just selling on price. If we always say if you sell based on price, they're going to leave you based on price. And there's always going to be someone cheaper. And if they're not cheaper right now, they're coming. So you can't build a business just based on that. Another big mistake is not tracking or gathering the right data. Tracking the right data helps you make decisions in your business in real time and the right decisions based on facts and not just based on what you think is happening. I thought for a very long time, my business was doing these things. And then when we started tracking the data, I had a very rude awakening of what was true and what I was imagining was true. And when you track data and you look at it consistently and you make sure the data is tracked properly, you will be able to do so much more in your business because you have the information, the right information to make these decisions based on facts and not based on just what you think is happening. You need to know. And it's so important. It saves you money. It saves you from doing things that activities and wasting time and energy and, and payroll and frustration on things that are not actually working. It gives you everything that you need to know to be able to completely scale your business and bring the results that you want. Another mistake that I made was I spent so much time working in my business and not on my business, really becoming a leader and a CEO that was more business oriented than I was operations oriented all the time. And the goal for me was to eventually make myself obsolete, make myself not needed in my business at all. And if I was going to do that, I could not continue working in my business all the time. Even as small as taking two hours a week that are non-negotiable, maybe on a Friday afternoon and say, these two hours, maybe you're going to step out of your office and go somewhere else to change your environment and just set that stage that this is the time I'm going to be working on my business, which is going to look like spending time with your money and not in a bookkeeping type of way, which is a business operating task but in a way that you want to learn how to do things better. You're going to check in with it. Um, it could be times where you're reading a book, where you're doing a training and developing yourself, where you're vision casting, where you're, you know you have this problem in your business, but while you're sitting at your desk, having the phone ring, having to answer it, having to do all these things, you're not able to take the time to really sit down and solve this problem and brainstorm about what you're going to do. All of these things happen when you're kind of working on your business as opposed to just in it doing the daily operating things. If you don't separate the two, the whirlwind of the day is going to take over and you're going to find yourself a year, two, three down the road and still having the same issues or still dealing with the same things or not even has scaled at all at that point. 
it's really important from the get-go that you spend time working on your business and developing that routine regularly to keep going. You might start with the two hours a week and eventually you're spending 90% of your time really scaling your business, maybe starting a new one, maybe doing other things. But the quicker you can get to the point that you understand there has to be time that working on your business and being more business and entrepreneurial you will be able to be more successful as opposed to just being an employee constantly within your business. The other thing is that I was spending so much time working too many hours, thinking that if I put in 15 hour days every single day, everything was going to eventually be successful. And eventually I was going to reach this place that I wanted to reach, thinking that right now I can just do it all myself. And that is not true. One of the things is when you hire out of desperation and you have these people that are just not a good fit in your business, when they don't end up doing it the way you want them to do it, you end up just taking it from them and doing it yourself. And then thinking to yourself, like, I'm just going to get rid of everyone because if I'm doing it myself, what am I paying for? And then you get to a point where you're burnt out and overwhelmed. You're like, I want to hire, I need to hire somebody. And then this vicious cycle keeps happening. Instead of taking it and having this I'll do it myself mentality, you need to have the mentality of a leader and how do you develop and invest in your team to get them to the place where you don't have to have this issue and really teach them how you would do it yourself and get them to a point where they're doing it almost better than you. And so thinking that you have to work all these hours is not true. You've got to work intentionally, strategically and have that execution get done consistently if you want results. Make sure you're focusing on the right thing right now in your business to get you to the next phase and not needing to spend that many hours to do it if you have that intention. Also, mistake was focusing on marketing and not branding. What happens here is that branding is really what matters. And only then, once you have your branding hashed out and really just completely strategized and understanding what you're trying to establish within your community, within your business, within the way people perceive you, what is the brand promise that you are articulating out into the world? What do you stand for? Why should people want to work with you? Why does it matter? What are you able to problem solve? All of those things are part of your brand. And I'm not talking about just like logos and things aesthetically. I'm talking about the, the heart the heartbeat of your business and why it exists. Why did that heart start beating and what keeps it beating? And why should people care about that heart beating? And why should they work with you? When you try to create a marketing plan and put marketing out into the world, the point is, is to communicate that brand. And if you don't do the work to figure out what that brand is and what you want it to say, and what you want people to think and perceive when they see it and when they hear it and when they read it, when they interact with your brand, then you don't know which vehicle is the best vehicle for your marketing and where to spend your marketing dollars to be able to get that return on investment to grow your business. And what happens is we just think we can slap a logo and our picture and our name or something like that on some marketing. And if you build it, they will come. It doesn't work. So really going back and focusing on your brand and then using your brand to tell you which marketing vehicles you should be using and where your money should be going to ensure that every time someone interacts with your brand, you're able to convert more and more people to want to work with your business. Another mistake is not communicating with my spouse. So, you know, especially when you are working in an industry they don't understand, maybe you're an entrepreneur and they're not you know, not having the right communication, you might not know how to communicate properly. This is something new to you, depending on the roles within your, your marriage or your partnership or your relationship and getting to a point where this is your baby. You become obsessed with your work and kind of focusing too much on that and losing the right, I wouldn't say balance, but the right integration of having the life and the business and how this all affects everybody that you have a relationship with. And I wouldn't take time to explain what I was doing or how it was going or what it meant or why this was important to me. And if he asked, I would get defensive. I would feel embarrassed because I was having issues with being happy where I was with my results. And 
I was attacking him thinking he was attacking me. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So it's really important that as you're turn, moving into entrepreneurship and your business and things and whatever phase you're at to work hard to communicate. This is just as much your responsibility as it is theirs to ensure that your relationship stays solid, that you are still showing up and providing them what they need and they can show up and provide you what you need and that this can be a great harmonious thing that's going to impact you and your family all together but it's really important to communicate it took me a long time to learn how to do this and to do it in a positive productive way and I wish I would have done it sooner even though we're in a good place now so this is something that I think was a huge mistake when I first started two more the la last two is hiding from doing things that feel hard procrastinating on things that I didn't like doing in my business that I felt like were hard, mostly because they were new or I just didn't have the process. So it just felt so heavy, even though it was very simple. I tended to overcomplicate things because it felt hard. So I thought it had to be hard and it doesn't need to be. Most of the time we're overcomplicating things. And if we could just get in and just get started, we realize it's actually pretty simple. We're making it more complicated in our mind, which then makes it feel harder, which then makes us procrastinate. So things like administrative work I didn't want to do, having hard conversations with employees that just tend to linger on and create a really bad environment. And I always tell everyone, if you need to let somebody go, it's better to have that five minute uncomfortable conversation now than have weeks, maybe months, maybe years of having to deal with that person. Imagine how much uncomfortableness comes with that than just having that five minute conversation, you know, having to do things like tracking and managing and, and kind of the unsexy stuff in your business you feel like it's hard because you don't have a process and you don't have a way to show up consistently. And so you procrastinate, but the quicker you can understand, you can't hide from these things. You can't just put them under the rug. They're still going to be there. And the longer you wait to get through that and to find the right process that you can show up consistently or to delegate or outsource or automate or whatever you can do to help you, the sooner you're going to be well off and the better your business is going to be. The last thing that I feel like was a big mistake is I made assumptions instead of gathering info on what was happening. So we talked a little bit about this when I was talking about tracking, but I made assumptions on what was happening with my team member when I felt like they were in a mood instead of just asking them, how are you? I noticed, you know, a shift. Are you okay? Is there something I can do for you? Instead of just assuming what you think is going through their mind. I made assumptions about somebody's capability because of the way they were achieving things or the results they were bringing or the activities they were doing. I was making assumptions about, you know, the market. I was making assumptions about me and how I was doing instead of asking some other people or doing some research to see, was I really showing up the way I thought I was? What was happening? And just not always trying to assume things and ask questions and gather that data so that you can really see is what you think in your mind, that reality in your head, is it the reality for others? Is it the reality of the situation? And being someone who's curious enough to ask good questions, to be able to get that information so that you can do better. And even when you think you are doing the best and the results are coming and money's flowing in and all the things you feel on top of the world, that is the best time to go back and ensure that your assumptions are validated. And if not, how do you fix that? Because the higher you go, the quicker you can fall and the harder you can fall. And so even when you're doing amazing, all of these things still apply and you almost have to work harder at sustaining your success than you even did at getting to that success. So I hope some of these helped you maybe take a look inward and say, oh, I might be making this mistake or I totally relate. I had made this mistake in before. You're so right. Or if you're really starting out, getting you prepared to try to avoid some of these things and how to be better at that.